afternoon. Good afternoon. What a crowd. Welcome, everybody. How are we feeling? Love it. What a special day. What a special day. Uh, my name is Mark Minner, and I have the good fortune to be able to serve as the voice of the Butler Bulldogs alongside my broadcast partner, Nick Gardner, who's out there in the crowd somewhere, as well as a, an alum and a trustee and, and a great admiration and love for this place. And, and what a special day. What a great day to be a Bulldog. We've got an incredible, for those of you who are streaming at home, we've got dual audience here. We've got an, an unbelievable crowd in person here inside this cathedral, Hinkle Fieldhouse, as well as all of you uh, being streamed online, wherever you might be around the world. We want to give a couple of uh, shout outs to a, uh, a few folks who are, who are near and dear here. Uh, Thad and, and Barb's daughter, Allie, is actually watching from Spain. So we are, this is a global broadcast now. And then Ellie, Thad's mom in South Carolina. So uh, in addition to those two and so many more, welcome inside Hinkle Fieldhouse as we get set. We've got a great program for you today as we'll bring you commentary from President James Danko, Athletic Director Barry Collier, and of course, new former returning head coach, Thad Mata. For our media members in attendance today, we'll have the program and then back in the press area where we usually do post-game press conference, we'll have a chance for additional conversation with Coach Mata. But without further ado, you're not here for me. We're going to get the program kicked off. Butler University President James Danko. Well, what a great day, and uh, welcome everyone, and thank you, uh, uh, Mark. Uh, Mark always does such a great job in these events, and it's because he's a Butler grad. He graduated with you know, a degree in this. So, uh, anyway, we, you know, today we're not only welcoming Thad Mata back home, but we're doing so during one of the best periods in Butler University's history. We've just announced recently that we've exceeded our $250 million Butler Beyond campaign goal, which is the largest fundraising initiative in our university's history. That deserves a round of applause. Thank you. <clears throat> our campaign success speaks to both the generosity of the Butler community and the positive momentum of this university. Progress across campus is evident, whether it's our new business school building, the investment we're making right now in the sciences, our new student housing, or right up the street right now where we are preparing a new eSports complex that will be right here on Butler's campus. I encourage you all to return on April 23rd when we will celebrate our campaign success and preview what's next for Butler University, including the future of athletics and Hinkle Fieldhouse. You know, with all the excitement that's happening at Butler, I'm sometimes uh, surprised to see the occasional critic pop up. I don't know if you ever take a look at Twitter. Um, but especially the last, uh, the last uh, few months, I've noticed an increased number of critics taking kind of shots at the basketball program, with some suggesting, believe it or not, that Butler doesn't belong in the Big East. Boo, right. I've just, I got a sampling. I, there's a lot of them, but there's some out there. Um, I did not like the idea when Butler joined the Big East. Too difficult to win with all the big teams in this league. Another person, Butler should have stayed in the A-10. And another recently, Butler might as well affix a sign outside Hinko. We love the Big East, but we can't really afford it. I guess what they suggest I do today is saying, you know, competing with the best is simply not for Butler. We've decided to quit. And, you know, Barry, if we're fixing a sign to Hinkle saying that, uh, you know, we're not going to be in the Big East, maybe instead of uh, the Butler way saying we demand commitment, maybe we could demand mediocrity. Or we could deny, instead of deny selfishness, deny a challenge. Or rather than to seek improvement, seek to lower the bar when over the going gets tough. You know, besides a poor understanding of academic and athletic finances, what these uh, social media uh, activists and pundits fail to realize and to take into account 
is that it's, just not, it's not just the size of your budget that counts. It's the size of your heart, your passion, your drive, your heritage, and your commitment to excellence. More importantly, they don't understand the history and determination of Butler University. Coaches like Tony Hinko, Barry Collier, Brad Stevens did not excel because they had unlimited resources or larger budgets than the competition. Far from it. They succeeded because they had intelligence, character, integrity, and an ability to motivate and lead others to achieve greatness. Players like Tom Bowman, who was the leading scorer on Butler's first NCAA tournament basketball team in 1962, a team that won a record 22 games at that time. Joel Cornett, who in the early 2000s led Butler to three NCAA tournament appearances and one trip to the NIT during his collegiate career. The players in 2010 and 2011 who made it to the Final Four, outstanding athletes that included Gordon Hayward, Matt Howard, Shelvin Mack, Ronald Norad, and Andrew Smith. Those outstanding athletes succeeded because of their athleticism, talent, determination, and grit. I don't believe an inflated budget could have attracted better players to this university. A successful athletic program and the ability to be competitive, first and foremost, is built upon outstanding people, and that is the Butler way. I can assure you that as long as I am president, you will never hear me say that this university is taking a step backward or backing down from a challenge. The leadership of Butler University, including the Board of Trustees and myself, is fully committed to excellence in our athletic programs and within the Big East. We stand ready to make the necessary investments to succeed. Bulldogs ever do or die. And that leads me to the primary focus of today's gathering and an example of our commitment to excellence. Let me first acknowledge the leadership of Laval Jordan. I had an opportunity to talk with him yesterday and express my appreciation for the positive impact he has made as coach these past few years and also for the outstanding way he has represented the very best of Butler University. Please join me in wishing Laval, Destiny, and their family all the best. You know, in my reference to Butler coaches of the past, I mentioned intelligence, character, integrity, and an ability to motivate and lead others to achieve greatness. And that brings me to a person who exemplifies those attributes. We are so very fortunate that Thad Mata is returning to Butler as the head of our men's basketball program. You know, my first interaction with Thad was about five years ago, and it had nothing to do with basketball. He and Barbara, his wife, were touring Butler with their oldest daughter, Allie. The context of our conversation that day was not basketball. It was about family. It was about the value of, of a Butler education. It was about community. Based on the outcome you may have assumed when we set out to hire a basketball coach, you might have thought we were intentionally looking for someone who was listed in every one of our university databases. Alumni, parent, season ticket holder, donor, former employee. But indeed, that is tied to our university in so many ways. However, there is another list, a very small list, the list of Hall of Fame caliber basketball coaches, and the name Thad Mata is on that list. Today, we bring him home, and I am excited to welcome Thad, Barbara, and their family back to Butler in this familiar role. I want to thank Barry Collier for his leadership of our <laughs> athletics department and for his work to identify the next great leader of our men's basketball program. I'm not sure that anyone has a greater appreciation for our university than does Barry. And he proves that day in and day out as a remarkable ambassador for Butler. Please welcome Barry Collier. Thank you, Jim. 
Uh, it's uh, with great appreciation that I'm here today as, as um, a person that reports directly to President Danko. I appreciate your leadership, your friendship, your commitment, and along with the Board of Trustees, uh, that commitment to support a top-level Big East program. I do also want to acknowledge uh, Laval Jordan and thank him for his considerable efforts in leading our program for the last five years. Laval is a good man, he's a Butler Bulldog, and he and his family will always be welcome here at Butler. It was important to me, President Danko, and the Board of Trustees that we identify a head coach with a proven record of success, providing a strong student-athlete experience, someone who values Butler, understands Butler, our educational opportunities, and our core values, an experienced leader with exceptional energy. We looked all over the world for this person. I found him across the street. We found that man again in Thad Mata. He's a man who's worn a Butler uniform, coached on our sidelines, and represented Butler well all these years, even when he was employed by others. He and Barb have been uh, they've answered the call and been donors to, uh, to Butler and Butler Athletics, and Thad assures me that will continue, right, Thad? Yeah. We, uh, we'll have a video here in a minute before Thad comes up, after the time I'm finished, before Thad comes up. And um, many of you have already read the press release on him and the information on his background and followed him like I have uh, consistently since he came to Butler and played here for, for me uh, his senior year. And uh, the video will show many of his accolades and accomplishments. His resume is among the most elite uh, in the world of college basketball. He's in the top five, top four of winning percentage of all current bas college basketball players in America. Uh, he's a relentless recruiter an excellent tactician, an outstanding communicator, and a leader. He, is a great, he has great character and is a man of integrity. I first met Thad when I returned to Butler as the head coach in 89, and I would say he coached me as much as I coached him that year. And even since then, as an assistant, this actually is the third time I've had the opportunity to hire Thad first as a, played for me, but then first as a assistant coach on the, on the beginning level, and then later as the top assistant, uh, and now again as our head coach at Butler. Um, so on behalf of all Bulldogs, Thad, Barbara, Barbara, Ali, wherever you are in Spain, and Emily, welcome home. Roll the video. Five years ago, he walked off the court. Many believed it was the end. Never say never. Thad Mata's run at Ohio State was so successful that the Buckeyes almost immediately made him a Hall of Famer. Two Final Four appearances, nine trips to the NCAA tournament, five Big Ten regular season championships, four Big Ten tournament titles, and the 2008 NIT crown. Three times his peers recognized him as the Big Ten Coach of the Year. Ten of his former players were selected in the NBA draft, and his teams won nearly 75% of their games. His career won't end at Ohio State, and it didn't start there either. In fact, Thad's collegiate resume began right here at Hinkle Fieldhouse, right around the same time mine did. A two-year starter at Butler, he was the captain of rookie head coach Barry Collier's 1989 team. As an assistant coach, he helped the Bulldogs to national recognition. As head coach, he was named 2001 Midwestern Collegiate Conference Coach of the Year in his lone season leading the Bulldogs. A then school record 24 wins, a league regular season title, an MCC tournament championship, 
and the Bulldogs' first NCAA tournament win in nearly four decades. It was, by all accounts, a pretty great year. From 2001 through 2004, his whereabouts are largely unknown. But legend has it, he won at least 26 games in each of those three seasons, back-to-back -back conference titles, and advanced to the Elite Eight his final year before being rescued by Ohio State. Today he's back, back on the sidelines, back at his alma mater, back at his first coaching stop, back home. There's work left to be done, and it starts right now. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, our friend, and our new head coach, Thad Mata. Pretty God you'll be doing it at the end of the season next year. So. Well, it's good to be home, and I, I, I want to start by, it's a little bit bittersweet to be here. I think, uh, you know, Laval Jordan played for me. And what most people understand is coaches are people. They have families. They have assistant coaches who have families. It's not as just easy as some idiot sitting on a, on a board late at night typing in what they want to type in because coaches do have feelings as well, and they are human beings. I think I want to make sure that, that I thank President Danko, Coach Collier, the Board of Trustees, and Butler University for this opportunity. You know, I read... I think it was Colin Powell that said, life is a roller coaster. You get on it, you go back for, you go for a hell of a ride, and it comes back to right where it started. Well, Butler fans, I just punched my ticket for another hell of a ride. You know, who am I? And I say this, I've always considered myself the luckiest person in the world. You know, from the, the ability to, to play this game, to go to school here, have the opportunity to go out to coach, just, it's, it's been an amazing ride for me to come back, to start where I began and do it all again. I consider that lucky. You know, I think from my family, thanking my family to Barbara, believe this or not, we met, first time I ever saw was right over there in the Wildman room. She never left me alone. <laughs> I finally uh, said, what the heck, let's, let's do this thing. From my daughter Emily, who's a, a junior here, uh, to my daughter Allie, if you're out there, she's in Barcelona, Spain, uh, to my mom. To my dad. Who, uh, I remember, he and I came over here for a visit, walked in, <laughs> said, I've been coming here. This is home. Damn, I wish recruiting was that easy nowadays. <laughs> Probably the farthest thing from it. You know, why Butler? Why Butler for that? I've had the opportunity to take a lot of jobs here over the course of the, the last few years. And none of them, none of them felt right. None of them, I, I went to the, the edge with a lot of them. And Friday, when, Friday afternoon when Barry called me and told me what was going on, I was sitting on a beach in Florida. I had to look far into the ocean and decide what I wanted to do. But I told Barb, I said, this, is, this one feels right. Feels right. Something, something feels great about this situation. And, you know, I, I think from the standpoint of, of what... Butler University did for me in terms of my education, in terms of, of making me a man. Um, you know, I, I, I think back, because I've always said this, if, if it wasn't for Butler, 
I'd probably be working, uh, you know, digging ditches or, or whatever, uh, in, just in terms of, of this place molded me. And, I, and, and it's funny because I've got friends here today who I'm grateful for. I've got teammates here that I'm grateful for. But we've always said this is just something a little bit different about a Butler guy. And when the call came, I wanted to get back. I wanted to be a Butler guy again. You know, I, I think from the standpoint of, of um, you know, when I look at, at all the things I've been able to do in life, all the places I've been able to go, all the people I've been able to meet, it's all because of Butler University. I think from the standpoint of, of what I love about Butler, Butler is old school in a new world. And, you know, all the places I've been, you know, Butler, when I say it's old school, you get what you deserve here. Nobody gives you anything. You go out, you earn it. And I love that about Butler University because, the, you know, the places I've been, the players I've had to deal with, the things that you have to deal with, that's what I love about Butler University. If you want it, you go get it. That's what I was taught. And when you think about that, that's life. And that's what Butler does. It prepares you for life. That's what intrigued me to come back here, that I'm going to be able to bring men in and the current players that are here. I'm going to be able to, to teach them to be men. That's what I enjoy about coaching. Yeah, winning and is great. There's no question. I told the players the other day, we're going to laugh together. We're going to cry together. There's going to be so many different things along the way that are going to happen. But when you leave here, you're going to be a man and you're going to be able to survive and make an impact in society. Those are the type of kids that I want at Butler University. You know, I think back to my senior year that we had five seniors and two went on to law school. Two went into to business and have, have, have completely rocked it. And there was one idiot who went into coaching. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I look at, at all the things that these guys have, have gone on and done in their lives, my teammates, the, the former Butler players, and, and you know, just being back around Butler the last few years, all the things these guys have gone out and accomplished. You know, I've always said this in recruiting, my job is not done with you until you're 35 years old. I pull up to your house, you got a three-car garage. You and your beautiful butler cheerleader that you married right after school come out and you got three kids and you tell me about your 401k. At that point, I say, he's made it. We did our job. And the great thing about that is I've got a great aid in Butler University and all the things that this place offers every student, every athlete, and that's, that's what makes Butler Butler. That's what brings me back here to be the basketball coach. You know, we, the, the Butler way, I, I tell you a great story. I don't know if there's ever been a luckier first year head coach than I was. Because I saw Barry Collier build Butler basketball. As a player and then working for him, I saw the things that he did to build this. The day he left to take the Nebraska job, I'll never forget this, he lands and calls me and says, hey, go to my house, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the Nebraska job. And we went out there and I said, Barry, I, I don't think you should take this job. He said, I, I, I just, I don't, I, don't, I don't like this one for you. He says, are you an idiot? You're going to be the next head coach at Butler University. <laughs> and it was, it was odd how it all worked out, but the day he left, I coined the phrase, when I finally got my staff together, I said, we're going to call this the Butler way. When I was leaving here after a year, my lawyer, Mike Masaya, said, you know, you ought to coin or, or trademark that. I had no idea the Butler way was going to stick to the level it did. So now to come back and be a part again of the Butler way, never been more excited. You know, the values of the Butler way, humility, passion, unity, servanthood, and thankfulness. Those are things that every stop I've gone, I've taken to. And I've always said this, after every win or every loss, I can look to that board with the team and say, the reason you won tonight was because you played with great passion. The reason we lost tonight was because we didn't have humility. It's been like the guiding light for me. It's been, you know, the, the, the thing that has driven me 
in coaching. I've taken that everywhere I've ever been, and I've noticed that they've added accountability. And it's funny because I read something the other day about accountability because it's where we brought it to the attention of my players. Accountability in society has become a bad word. Nobody wants to be accountable anymore. And I'm so thankful that that was added. Like, if, you know, hey, you're accountable. It's like, oh, no, I don't want to be accountable. No, no, you will be accountable in our program. You know, I, I think in, in terms of, of my coaching, and I've said this, I have done every single thing that you can do in coaching, with the exception of one. I have not won the national championship. I've played for it. I've had a couple teams that have got knocked off along the way that, that I, I, I swear uh, the last second shot uh, in New Jersey, not that it sticks with me. Um, you know, taking Michael Conley out with his second foul in the first half against Florida, and they went on a 6-0 run on us. Not that that, not that I think about that stuff. Um, I don't think Michael's probably played in 20,000 NBA games and has never fouled out once in his life. That tells you how smart I was back then. Um, but I say that from the standpoint of, of, of where the goal is, where the mission is. And, and I think that the one thing, you know, if you say that, what have you learned since you've been out of coaching? It's not easy. You know, the, the media, the fans, they're all trying to build a ship inside of a bottle. The coach, he's in a damn rowboat in the middle of the ocean in a storm. It's amazing how things have changed in terms of that. Now, I will tell you this. I'm ready to get in my rowboat, and I'm ready to get it back to shore. Understand, we, we, we have one mission here. You know, I, I see all the time across the board, every time they, they get rid of a coach, we're going to take our program to the next level. Well, this program has been to that level, and that's what we are shooting for. That's what we're going after. You know, as, as I talked about, you know, the, the vision I have for this program, I remember being a young assistant. As we were walking out, I told Barry, I said, you know, if there's more people here than when I played at a game. As crazy as that sounds, and, and I am being dead serious. There are more people here today than, than back when we played. But as I was an assistant coach, even when I was a head coach, I had this vision of this place being full. I had this vision of, of Butler University being a national powerhouse. You know, back in the day, I'd go down to the ticket office before I went home. I'd grab 100 tickets, stop at Kroger on the way, and I'd just be handing out tickets trying to get people in the stands. Now I think I have to sell those for a few extra bucks uh, to, to get the people back in the, the stands. I know how this place works. But, you know, just, just from the standpoint of, of, of everything that, that I want to get accomplished, I know comes with one thing, hard work. I wouldn't have taken this job, let's address the elephant in the room, if I didn't think I was physically capable of doing this job and doing more than the job needs. You know, you find out in recruiting there was times late in my career where people were saying he's going to die. You can't choose that school. It tells you how crazy this profession is. I'm not going to die. My foot doesn't work. That's it. I've also got the best doctor here today who in town to take care of me and, uh, and Chuck Hasbro. But I think just from the standpoint of, of I am in, I am ready to go. I'm in the process of, of putting a staff together and I'm putting this staff together for Butler University, and most importantly, I'm putting this staff together for my players. Because the one mission I have as the head coach at Butler University is to make my players the best that they can possibly be. They're going to see that. They're going to feel that. You know, I, 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 I've always said this. My role as your leader is to continuously define reality. You, know, you get it all the time. Coach, I'm ready. Coach, I'm ready. No, you're not ready. You haven't prepared yourself to play at the level we need you to play. And we're going to drive these guys. The one thing I think, you know, I, I was always tabbed, and I, don't, I still to this day don't know what this means, but I was a player, I am a player's coach. And I think I take that as a compliment from the standpoint of my guys enjoy playing for me. You know, we had a record at, at, at I think it was Ohio State, 314 and 8 when we led with five minutes to go in a game. We won 74% of our games in February. We won 78% of our games in March as a head coach. 
Our guys enjoy playing. They enjoy getting better. The big question, the million dollar question, what's your style of play, coach? My style of play is a winning style of play. Yes, I want to play fast. Yes, I want to shoot threes. But I don't want to shoot threes if we're not going to make threes. I've got, I've got a lot of work to do in terms of, of how we're going to play and what we're going to do. But I will tell you this, as I told the eight guys, this is a great story, because this thing has happened so fast. How quick this whole thing has, has turned around and here I stand before you today. But I, I, they scheduled a team meeting Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And the great thing is where I live, I, I could leave my house at 10.55 and get here on time for the meeting. But I left the house and I told Barbara, I said, you know, I could walk in this room in five minutes and nobody be in there because of the, the change of, of, and the culture of where college basketball is. All eight guys pieces to the puzzle. But as I told those guys, November 9th or whenever the opening day is, when 9,200 people come into this building, they're going to say, what the hell happened to these guys? They're going to look different. They're going to play different. They're the same guys, but they're different dudes. And that's what we're going to go after as, as we begin our work process, as we begin building Butler basketball, trying to take it to where we want it. It's been proven it can be done. You know, the, the job that Brad Stevens did. You know, I've always said, people always ask me about Brad when I uh, stole him from Eli Lilly. Tells you how smart he is. And I would give him something to do, and he'd give it back, and it'd be 10 times better than how I had given it to him. So to see the success that he's gone on and he's had with the Boston Celtics and the NBA is, is truly, truly amazing. And Brad has become, uh, a, a, obviously, a tremendous friend, but a tremendous um, confidant in terms of this. And, and his, his support for this job meant the world to me. Him at calling me and saying, hey, I think if you feel like it, I think you should do this. I wouldn't be happier than, than having you back at Butler. But he set the bar high. And we know what we're capable of doing. And we know what we've got to do. We've, we've got to make guys better. I, there's this guy, you probably never heard of him, named John, John Wooden. And he once said, the guy with the best players wins nine out of ten times. We've got to get our players better. We've got to get the guys who are coming in here. We've got to work them. They're going to enjoy the process. They're going to see the growth. They're going to see all the things that go into being a Butler Bulldog. I've never in my life been more excited to start this journey. And like I said, I've punched my ticket, and I'm ready for another heck of a ride, and I can't wait. Thank you.